Shut it, man! All right, it's the Hawk. I recently made a video on Lex Luger who appeared in TNA a few times, and for some reason people found that pretty interesting. So I figured out, why not do the same for Buff Bagwell? Buff Bagwell is an acquired taste. Most people seem to hate him nowadays. That isn't something the Hawk goes along with. I think he's guilty of attention seeking and perhaps living in the past at times, but it can't be denied he was a massive star in WCW. I'll never forget that night on Monday Night Raw when Vince McMahon had just purchased the WCW and he was running down a list of the WCW talents to the audience. All of the guys that Vince listed were main eventers, but Buff Bagwell was included, and the audience reaction said it all. Vince even looked shocked by how popular he was. So you know, respect to Buff Bagwell, he might have a lot of strange stories surrounding him, but he was a legit star, no one could take that from him. Unfortunately, when Vince hired Bagwell for the invasion angle, it didn't go well. You've heard all this before, so I won't spend too much time on it, but he was fired pretty quickly. WWF couldn't wait to get rid of old Buff Bagwell. Luckily for Buff, he didn't have to join the unemployment line for long. Three months after leaving the WWF, he toured Australia with World Wrestling All-Stars. They were basically TNA before TNA existed. It was pretty much the same roster. Bagwell actually wrestled 26 matches for them, including house shows over the space of a year. This would be the last bit of continuity Buff Bagwell would have in this wrestling career. I've reviewed all of those pay-per-views in full, and it wasn't exactly anything to write home about. The World Wrestling All-Stars wouldn't be long for this world, but luckily for Bagwell, TNA was just starting up and Buff Bagwell appeared on the first ever TNA show in a gauntlet match for the NWA heavyweight title. Bagwell was the second entrant, whilst the first entrant was... a wild slap nuts of his. The crowd are very excited to see Bagwell and he gets a great crowd reaction. He's moving pretty well in this match. He does a net breaker and a blockbuster, but then slap nuts just throws him out of the ring before entrant number three can even make their way out. In fact, Bagwell is eliminated so quickly that they bring number three out quicker than planned. Mike today makes a comment pretty much saying that Bagwell has failed once again. This was a really weird way to book Bagwell because he was one of the biggest stars in this match, but he got chucked out like he was nothing. We wouldn't have to wait too long for Buff's second TNA appearance, and this is probably the one he's most famous for, because what TNA decided to do with him on his second show is bizarre to say the least. So this is coming from the third ever episode of TNA. He appears with a backstage interview of Goldilocks calling her the wrong name. He thinks she's called Goldie Lick. He is a surprise entrant in a tag team tournament match tonight. This interview is hilariously bad, but it's not the one he's most remembered for. Bagwell says he's a six-time tag team champion, all with different partners, and he's doing it again tonight, with a completely random partner, Apollo. He low-key makes fun of his partner's lack of English speaking. Goldilocks, the interviewer, sarcastically calls it a wonderful interview. And this second Buff Bagwell TNA match will see him last longer, which is a good time to tell you all about today's video sponsor. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No sponsors are touching me after the last incident. We like to have a good time on this channel. Bagwell and Apollo take on the Rainbow Express, the team of Lenny Lane and Alan Funk, who have the gimmick of a homosexual tag team. It seems like this match is really only going one way. The Rainbow Express have a gimmick that isn't really designed to be taken seriously, versus two big power guys. But no, Bagwell has to watch his partner being isolated for ages. Buff Bagwell gets the hot tag eventually, and the comrade team talks about finally seeing an undistracted Buff Bagwell. Unfortunately for him, he tries to crossbody Lenny Lane out of the ring, and they can't quite manage it. The comrade team say that Bagwell is more interested in being in love with himself. Bagwell does manage to hit the blockbuster on Alan Funk, but he doesn't make the pin because he's too busy being in love with himself. He turns around into one weak super kick from Lenny Lane and that's the three. The comrade team rant about how important this match was and Bagwell has screwed his life up, but it doesn't end there. Bagwell looks absolutely devastated sat in the ring. He moves on to sit on the ring apron as he talks to himself and the comrade team scream, who is he talking to? Ed Ferrara makes his way up to him and shoves a mic in his face. Bagwell says he can no longer be called Buff and we need to call him Marcus from now on. He proceeds to go on one of the strangest rants in wrestling history. I have no idea what TNA or Buff Bagwell are thinking of for this one. The abridged version is he broke his neck in WCW and nobody cares about him still. He's a six time world tag team champion who just got beat by two gay guys. His words not mine. I'm a six time world tag team champion and I just got beat by two gay guys. Buff has ruined his career, and he's Marcus from now on, and he's going home. He even gives Ed Ferrara his wacky top hat. Mike Tanay says that Bagwell needs to rethink his career choices. And this whole wacky chapter feels like it's leading to a new character for Buff Bagwell. It doesn't. So this whole episode goes down as one of those wacky early TNA moments. A truly bizarre couple of promos that seemingly happen for absolutely no reason other than to make Bagwell look stupid. He sticks to his word, and he goes home. Well, at least until the 13th episode of TNA. He randomly turns up in yet another battle royal, this time for a shot of tag team gold. He flips Brian Lawler off and everything seems to be the same with him despite the previous promo. He gets the better of the equally wacky Brian Lawler. The match kind of trundles along, Bagwell mostly fights Lawler. Lawler tries to bite his head off at one point. Bagwell won't leave Lawler alone and he double eye pokes him. 
That was a bad choice because Lawler proceeds to hit him in the slash zone twice. Bagwell exists in this match for a long time, probably 10 minutes, but he exists doing nothing. He eventually gets overzealous and he's thrown out by the underfaker Brian Lee and a Harris twin. A completely pointless TNA appearance that achieved nothing for him. And you'd think that would be it for Buff, but no. It's now 31 TNA shows later. Yet again, they're having a battle royal. He enters towards the end of the match, so you might think that gives him a chance. He hits a blockbuster on fake Road Rash character Just Incredible. And who's ready for Buff Bagwell's biggest TNA achievement? Here it is. He throws out and eliminates Brian Lawler. Seconds later, the gifted Glenn Gilberti, how is he gifted, gives him a stunner and eliminates Bagwell. <sighs> Why did they keep bringing him in if this is all they had for him to do? Bagwell would not have any further televised TNA matches, which is probably a good thing. He wasn't exactly achieving anything in the ring. He does resurface in TNA a few times in 2006 in a similar way to my Lex Luger video. He was really just there to further the story between Slapnuts and Sting. Because as established, Sting is super effective against Jeff Jarrett. Sting was being edgy and was trying to bring in guys from Jeff Jarrett's past for him to face in a tag match. Bagwell is one of the mystery men who's described as former NWO member, five-time WCW tag team champion with four different partners, and he's currently on probation in Cobb County, Georgia. Also, his mum is one half of the WCW tag team champions. Not something to brag about. It's Buff Bagwell. Jarrett looks at him with amusement. He calls Bagwell a top hat wearing moron. Sting tells us that as you can see, Buff is still the stuff. Eventually, Bagwell was not chosen as Sting's partner. Probably a good thing, he would have lost. Sting chooses Samoa Joe instead. The very last time he was seen on TNA TV was the 28th of September 2006. He was at a fake press conference because yet again Sting and Slapnuts are fighting. Bagwell and Lugo are here to show support for the Stinger Steve Borden. They actually both appear in the ring with Cornette as well and they get a nice crowd reaction. Slapnuts soon joins them and they're unhappy of how he's speaking about their friend Sting. Bagwell and Jarrett fight for a little bit but Jarrett is too strong for Bagwell. Buff Bagwell continued to wrestle in the independent scene whilst at the same time being a male gigolo. And for the rates he was charging, it certainly seemed more profitable than wrestling for TNA. This is a question I've often asked myself, because it seems women are far more open to being exploited. But Bagwell working as a gigolo would not be a dream job. Let me tell you why. It wouldn't have been a lot of hot young women paying for his services. Not at those prices. It would have been old, shriveled up, wrinkly Ric Flair ball sacks. And the Hawk just couldn't do it. Not for $10,000. It would need to be a substantial amount of money because spending a night with an old lady is something that would haunt you for the rest of your life. And besides, the hawk is worth more than that. But let me know in the comments, what is your payment for escorting to 80 year olds? And no, she's not a hot 80 year old, if that even exists. Name your price, let's see what a man's worth is. Bagwell did wrestle some house show matches for TNA in 2006, but never another match on telly for them. It was a close call. After this, Bagwell was done with TNA at this point, but his name would come up in conversation on internet forums as a potential signing for the following decades. In fact, I still see people asking that question today. However, we did have a very close call. In 2010, the Hulkster arrived in TNA. Lots of his friends found themselves back with a job. I'm talking people who hadn't been relevant since WCW 10 years earlier. In fact, the Nasty Boys hadn't been relevant for 15 years earlier. Jimmy Hart, Bubba the Cum Sponge, The Click, they all wound up with jobs, and there could have been someone else. In an interview in 2013, Buff Bagwell revealed he had meetings with Bischoff around this time at the Hulks to join TNA. He was backstage in TNA, but it never seemed to progress. Hogan reportedly stated to him how good Bagwell was looking, and he was perplexed that he didn't already have a job. Hogan also told Bagwell he was one of the few people they could bring into TNA and not get any heat. Jesus Christ, was Hawk Hogan living on his own planet? He didn't think people would flip out at a Buff Bagwell push in 2010. Anyway, nothing happened and Bagwell again thought he was coming into TNA in 2013. <laughs> Join the Aces and Eights. I can't even say that one with a straight face. I think it's pretty telling that despite his close friend Steve Borden working for TNA and obviously having power in that company, he was never able to get Buff Bagwell a permanent gig. They really just didn't want Buff Bagwell. I don't think that's a knock on him as a performer. I think it's the drama he brings as a person. Buff Bagwell recently came back into the news this year as he's resurfaced with lots of interviews talking about his health. A much older and frailer looking Buff Bagwell is struggling with addiction for painkillers and alcohol. He has moved in with DDP so Paige can work some of his miracles to help improve Bagwell's health. What's crazy is that Bagwell is looking like a completely different person nowadays at the age of 52. But at the latest reports, he seems to be clean and sober. So good for him. Hopefully he can enjoy the rest of his life, because he's still relatively young compared to the normal WCW names we talk about. But no matter how clean he gets, TNA will never give him a shout.